In this video, I will walk you through an optimization problem. An optimization problem is one where you are trying to maximize or minimize some value. In problem number one, a manufacturer wants to design an open top box having a square base and a surface area of 108 square inches. What dimensions will produce a box with maximum volume? The bottom of the box is a square, so we can call the dimensions x and x. The height of the box will be something different. I'm going to call it y. An optimization problem will usually have two equations. The primary equation will be whatever the quantity is that we are trying to maximize or minimize. In this case, we are trying to find the dimensions that will produce a box with maximum volume. So we are trying to maximize the volume. So that means that the primary equation needs to be a volume equation. We know that volume is length times width times height. So in this case, the volume will be x times x times y. Uh, but of course, I'm going to write x squared y instead. So we know that the volume will be x squared times y. Ultimately, we will have to take the derivative of this equation. But when we do that, we don't want there to be two different variables. Somehow we need to turn this into an equation of volume that has only one variable in it. To make that happen, we are going to need a secondary equation. In this problem, the secondary equation will come from this statement right here that I highlighted in blue. The surface area is 108 square inches. The surface area will be the sum of all of the areas of all of the faces. This open box has five faces. There are four sides and then the bottom. So the surface area is going to be the sum of all of those faces. Let's start with the bottom. We know that the bottom uh, is a square, so that's x times x. So the area of the bottom face will be x squared. Now, um, look at this rectangle in the front. This is one of the faces. What will be the area of this rectangle? Well, that would be x times y uh, because it's the base times the height, and the height of this rectangle is y. So um, that's going to be the same if you look at this face over here. All right, what's the area of this blue rectangle? That's also x times y. So if you go around um, all of the sides, the four sides, they all have an area of x times y. And there are four of them. So guess what? If I add all of those up, it will be 4xy. So this is an expression for the surface area of this box that has no top. And we know that the surface area is to be 108 square inches. So this should all equal 108. And this is our secondary equation. We can use the secondary equation to solve for one variable and substitute it into our primary equation. And in that way, we will get an equation that only has one variable in it. Let's get y by itself and do that substitution. So here we go. Subtracting x squared from both sides, we will have uh, 4xy is equal to 108 minus x squared. To get y by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by 4x. So I will have y equals 108 minus x squared over 4x. Okay, let's go ahead and take this value and substitute it for y in our primary equation. So then we will have volume is equal to x squared times 108 
minus x squared over 4x. Notice that we have an x here and we have x squared here. The x in the denominator will cancel out one of the x's in the numerator. So that's going to leave volume equals x times 108 minus x squared over 4. Let's go ahead and do the a plus b over c rule. What am I talking about, you say? If I have a plus b over c, I can split this up into two fractions by doing a over c plus b over c. Always know that. So I'm, I'm going to use that technology right now on this, well, it's a minus b over c. Same deal. You know what I'm, you know what I'm talking about. So I'm going to have x, and then I'm going to split this up into two fractions. So this would be like 108 over 4 minus x squared over 4. All right, that's my a plus b over c rule. Uh, what is 108 divided by 4 anyway? 108 divided by 4 is 27, and I went ahead and wrote x squared over 4 as 1 fourth times x squared. So now I can do the distributive property with this x. So I'm going to get volume is equal to 27x minus 1 fourth x cubed. So this is a simplified expression for volume that only has one variable in it. This is the expression that we need to maximize. We have learned that a relative max or min can only occur at a critical number. So we need to take the derivative of this volume and uh, find the critical numbers. In other words, we need to find where v prime is equal to zero and where v prime is undefined. And uh, that will lead us to the location of the uh, the max or min. In this case, obviously, we just want the maximum. Anyway, we need to take the derivative. So we will do v prime equals. The derivative of 27x is just 27. And then there's the minus 1 fourth for you. Um, using the power rule on x to the third power, this 3 is going to come to the front. In fact, I'm just going to go ahead and put that 3 right here in the numerator. So there you go, and I will reduce this power by 1, so this is x squared. So this is v prime. We need to find where v prime is equal to 0 and where it is undefined, but this is a polynomial, so it is defined everywhere. So we don't really need to worry about where it's undefined this time, this time, maybe next time. So let's set v prime equal to 0 and find any critical numbers that we can find. So 27 minus 3 fourths x squared will equal 0. Adding 3 fourths x squared to both sides, we get 27 is equal to 3 fourths x squared. I'm solving for x squared, probably the most efficient way to get x squared by itself is to multiply now by the reciprocal, which is 4 over 3. So that's what I'll do. I'm multiplying by 4 over 3 now. Um, the 3 fourths and the 4 over 3, that cancels out. <clears throat> when I do 4 over 3 times 27 over 1, I don't feel like multiplying 4 times 27. Instead, how about we divide the 3 into the 27. So 3 goes into 27 9 times. So what I really have on the left now is 4 times 9. So that is 36. So I now have uh, 36 is equal to x squared. Taking the square root of both sides, I get x is equal to 6. I don't need to say plus or minus 6 because we're talking about uh, the length, the physical length 
uh, of a box, and it can't be negative. So x equals 6. So we have the value of x. Uh, maybe I should put a box around this or something. This is not the final answer, but that's part of the final answer. We also need the value of y, which we can get from this expression. Let me just copy this over. So there's my secondary equation all over again. Um, we need to substitute 6 for these x's. So I have y equals 108 minus 6 squared over 4 times 6. y equals 108 minus 36 over 24. So y equals 72 over 24, which means that y equals 3. So these are the dimensions that we were looking for. In order to maximize the volume, the box will have dimensions length 6 inches, width 6 inches, and height 3 inches.